Sean wow. is next to me, realizing he Monday. ran the wrong intro. Uh -oh. But it's fine. Always meet me at the mullet. I'm down. Um, welcome to the PHNX Coyotes podcast, brought to you by the one and only DraftKings Sportsbook app, America's top-rated sportsbook app. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe wherever you get your podcasts, and leave us a five-star review. I'm Leah Merrill here with Steve Peters and Craig Morgan, and I have a new background behind me. I am sitting at my new desk at the new office in downtown Phoenix. So This is not a virtual background. This is real. Nice. Yep. It's real. So very That's happy good. to be here. Finally, cool. finally got internet set up in the office. So we're locked in, ready to go. Fun day. Lots, lots maybe, to talk about today. Yeah. Maybe we can run the Christian Fisher uh, thumbnail again later so people can see it. It doesn't have a bottle of ketchup on it though. So I, I don't know if it's even worth it. It does not, but that's Jeez. okay. Um, we'll get to Christian. Wait, let's let Peter no, get a uncle. shot. <laughs> who, who did the ketchup? Who, yeah, you literally rolled that, didn't you? The ketchup, let's catch up with good. Yeah, Lord. that was Craig. Fish Friday. <sighs> He's been making I, that I joke all week. You shouldn't I have just been surprised. Can't get away from the ketchup. I can't get away from it. And then we got hot dog things. We got the hot dog popsicle he sent us today. Oh, does that look disgusting, by the way? A yeah, hot dog popsicle? It, it clearly does. Nope. Like, no. That's no, a big. No, thank you. That's a big no. Brewing Fork's already throwing shade. Great job, Craig, for all your hard work in setting the new office up. <laughs> Thank you very much. You know, I, I'm exhausted. I, I admit I'm exhausted. All the Meanwhile, direction that PD's... I've been giving the staff from afar, it's, you know, it's frustrating sometimes. Meanwhile, Petey's literally like on his hands and knees installing <laughs> flooring. So. Yeah, I did. it looks good, though. I got to tell you that. The studio looking good. I can't wait. Are we ever going to do a show there is the big question. Like, when is yes, that? Yes, we will very soon. Well, like I said, we have plenty to get to today. We did talk to Christian Fisher earlier in the week. We're going to show that in just a little bit here. But the Phil Kessel news broke Wednesday night. Of course, after we pre-recorded our free agents podcast, I just knew that was going to happen. Um, but a lot of what we said was still relevant about Phil Kessel. So let's dive right into it because Phil Kessel has officially signed a contract with the Vegas Golden Knights. Initial thoughts, initial reactions, surprise, not surprised. I'll toss it over to whoever would like to go first. We'll let Craig go first because he did the did the article. He just put on his glasses, so I know I, he's I know. he's, he's getting ready to read. Coming. Yep, yep. And uh, you know, I think we all saw the Phil Kessel shots, the screenshots of him doing the interview, the the teleconference for the Vegas Golden Knights. From the ice den Scottsdale parking lot, because he had just come off the ice at the ice den after a half yep. hour skate, which was hilarious. And he made a point because they were telling him to fix his camera. He was like, I just got in the car. I'm, I just got off the ice. <laughs> so it was like, give it's me a break. Such a Phil Kessel thing to do it for was his interview. Such isn't a it? classic Phil Kessel moment. But anyway, yeah, I, I, have a, I have a column up sort of looking at Phil Kessel's tenure. I think a lot of people have seen that and reacted that. But Phil Kessel spoke yesterday because of that teleconference. And he said some things that I thought were fair. You know, when, he, when you talk about being a, a guy who's going to turn 35 for, before the next season, wanting to win, and thinking he was going to have that opportunity here and then having things change on him, I get all that. That's all fair. At this stage of his career, Phil Kessel deserves to go to a team where he has a chance to compete because he doesn't have much time left. I get that sentiment, and I didn't have a problem with him saying even it's nice to go to a team that's trying to win. Agreed. That's fair. I, I know people get all bent out of shape about that, but that's a fair thing to say. Phil Kessel didn't say, oh, I, you know, they never tried to win here. They tried to win initially, and then obviously there was a change in ownership. There was a change in management. There was a change in coaching. They assessed the situation and realized they weren't going to win with, with the cast of characters that they had. So they decided to do a rebuild. No veteran wants to be a part of that, right? Not a 35-year-old forward who's won two cups. He doesn't want to be a part of a rebuild for the next few years, end his career like that. So I get all that. I think that's all fair. Fair. But here's what Phil didn't say that I thought he should have said. First of all, let's look at the Iron Man streak. Phil Kessel is only eight games away from breaking what is now Keith Yandel's Iron Man streak. He's going to do that next season in Vegas, but he's going to do it because – the Coyotes kept putting him on the ice while he was here for three seasons, even when he wasn't playing at 100%. He had a groin injury early in his career that probably should have put him on the shelf. He had a hamstring injury last year that probably put him on, should have put him on the shelf, but they kept putting him out there 
to respect the streak, even when he wasn't at 100%, even when other players might have been better than Phil Kessel on the ice. They played him to honor the streak. So how about saying thanks for that? How about when they had the baby to, to yeah. keep the streak? The team puts him in for one shift in Detroit in March. Then they fly him across country on a private jet so he could get home to witness the birth of his first child. And by the way, the team won 9-2 without him, which was their largest margin of victory and largest offensive output of the season. So how about saying thank you for that? Because that was a really nice gesture by the Coyotes. And then, as I pointed out earlier, you saw the screenshot of where Phil Kessel did the interview yesterday. Where's Phil Kessel skating right now? Whose team room is he using right now? Who's sharpening his skates right now? Who's doing all those things for Phil Kessel while he's preparing and trying to find another team, another home? Maybe you could say thank you for that as well. You want to speak truth about the Coyotes' less than ideal situation and how it meshes with your career? Fine. Again, that's all fair. But show some gratitude for what they did for you. Kessel's comments were just a one-sided take on his tenure here, and that doesn't even account for his oft-mentioned training habits or defensive deficiencies. You want to play for a winner at this stage of your career? Fine. But how many teams wanted Phil Kessel at last year's trade deadline? Well, I'll tell you, exactly two showed any interest and they wanted the Coyotes to pay a chunk of his salary that had already been cut by Toronto, which retained $1.2 million in the trade with Pittsburgh. There was no value in trading Phil Kessel at the deadline because nobody really wanted him. The Coyotes kept playing him. They even let him use their facilities, as I said before. So you want to say all those other things? Fine. But I really felt Phil Kessel missed an opportunity to also say thanks. This was not a one-sided story. He made it out to be. Wow. I don't know what you add to that. I, I think that, that I'll just make it really quick. I think a couple things about Phil Kessel. I don't think he ever, um, he had a 20 goal season in 2021. Um, I thought last year he fell short offensively. His first season in Arizona, I thought he felt short offensively. Um, he became a better puck distributor than he was a scorer. Um, and his power play numbers, if they would have been up where he wanted them to be last year, he would have been gone at the trade deadline. Unfortunately, they weren't. I will say this about Phil. Do I think he, he might, he might have an increase in his offensive output in Vegas. He might, he might, he might get an opportunity because he's going to, he, he's got to put your money where your mouth is. You better come in ready to play. You better come in in shape and you got something to prove now and you got a pay cut, a big pay cut, and you got something to prove with a team that's a team that's got something to prove. So I, I wouldn't be surprised to see him have a better season than he's had. I agree with what you said about the Coyotes. One other thing I want to say about Phil Kessel, and it, it follows him around a, a lot around this league, and you hear it on, on Twitter and social media. Is he's a, I don't know if it's a bad guy or not a great locker room guy, and th those things couldn't be farther from the truth. I just wanted to say that inside the Coyote locker room, he was extremely well-liked. Players mm -hmm. liked being around Phil. They like golfing with Phil, hanging out with Phil, being around Phil. He was a fun guy in the locker room. Guys liked Phil Kessel. So I don't want it to people oh he's a jerk and glad we're got no phil's a good guy he's just he's a is he a little different yeah i think he's a little different guy but but he was well liked in this room i think he'll have a, a little better season i agree with you on the iron man streak we beat that to death about what we think about how what is that streak it's a it's an attendance award now versus hey you really muscled through and and, and you were an effective player for all those games because clearly the game in detroit playing one shift doesn't doesn't ring true for me on, on what that award or that that record means but anyway good luck to phil kessel i i don't think he's a good fit here anymore i think what they're trying to do i think it's great for both parties and let's move on and on the point of him you know the the bad rap that he gets all points that i made in the story he was he was beloved i i even called him a cult hero here and he doesn't even understand why but you know when, when you're around phil he, he is a he's a funny guy there are those moments where you get a glimpse of his personality where you understand why coaches, some coaches and like Rick Tockett and players love the guy. And it's not like he was a cancer in the room. That's, that's, that's not fair to characterize him that way. No, he was a very popular teammate, but the criticisms that we've made of him in the past are, are also fair. It's like, like anything in life, just about it's a nuanced argument. There, there, there are sides for their pros and cons to Phil Kessel without a doubt, but you're absolutely right. PD overdue for Phil Kessel to move on. And I do think he is a guy who, who could help Vegas in the right situation. I am curious if they're going to play him high in the lineup in the top six. There, there's, no there's some there concerns there, clearly. There's some concerns. I don't think there's there room there for Phil. 
I, I think Phil's a, he's a, he's a third line right winger at best. You got Riley Smith, Mark Stone to play on the right side ahead of him. You're going to see Stone with Eichel for sure. Um, I'd be surprised if he gets any higher than the three hole right now, but that puts him with Nicholas Waugh. I mean, we'll see. He's going to have mm-hmm. a different role. He's going to have a different role in Vegas for sure. And I'm not even convinced that there's room on the first power play for him. Yeah. And he doesn't He'll like playing with, uh, he doesn't like playing with less than talented centers, <laughs> right? He likes to yeah. play with skilled centers. So we'll see how all of that works out. If he is relegated to that third line role. Do you guys, so of all of the other 31 teams in the NHL, were you surprised it was Vegas? Do you think Ooh. it's the best fit for him and someone just made a comment that there's no additional state tax in in nevada so you know that's a little bonus for him no we've been talking about Vegas forever right hang out yep oh yeah vegas lives in vegas yeah they can go talk it's there he kessel loves to gamble he loves the golf he can do all the things that he loves off the ice although he said on the interview he's not going to have a lot of time to play poker we'll see uh, I think it would be funny to have like a uh, Kessel cam on or maybe just uh, monitor the cameras in the casinos and on the golf courses and you can probably track Phil's daily progress. Um, but I, I, we've been saying all along Vegas was the landing spot for him. They need offensive punch. They need help on that power play, which has just been terrible. So we'll see if Phil can help them. Yeah. And, and of course, Vegas more than anything, probably still needs goaltending help. If they're, if yeah, they're you, actually, you lose Patch already, you lose that offense, you lose that offense on the power play. Well, power play that was struggling as it was. Um, so I think this is the right fit for Phil. It's a team that he thinks can win. Um, you know, we've, we had them winning the Pacific a year ago. I, I'll be surprised when we do our Pacific ratings, if we have them winning it again this year, I think I'd be surprised with their goaltending woes, but good luck to Phil. It's going to be an interesting story to watch, see what kind of um, return welcome he gets. Do they do a Phil Kessel video? Does Rich Nairn working on that, editing that right now for the Mullet Arena return of of Phil Kessel? We'll see. Nice. Uh, Sorry to call you out, Rich. Remember that was Petey, not me. (laughs) Um, Rich is editing it now. Say what you want about Phil Kessel, but he's still a two-time Stanley Cup winner. He's, you know, in his mid thirties, he has a veteran presence and you talked about how he's well-liked in the locker room. So in terms of what Vegas needs, it, it could be a great fit. So, and for a million know, bucks. Yeah. A million five. Best, like seriously, Vegas, really best of luck to Phil. Best yeah. of luck. And I had no problem with what he said that he wants to play for a team that wins. I agree with Craig's points. Like it, that, that comment didn't bother me. Maybe it was the lack of gratitude for Arizona, but also, you know, we're not in his shoes. So I don't, know what he's going through but excited for him and excited for his his family and hopefully he can keep that iron man streak alive because he could possibly we don't know what's happening with keith andle yet he could possibly pass him if keith andle decides to retire any are there any uh, odds odds associated with phil kessel's uh, season in vegas next year yet i don't i'm not seeing any thing for phil kessel i was just curious how vegas is as a whole so I see right now for the championship, they're plus 2,000. So they're kind of in that front grouping um, of NHL. Colorado, Florida, Toronto, Carolina, Tampa, Edmonton, Calgary, Pittsburgh, Minnesota, Vegas. Those are the odds on the DraftKings Sportsbook app right now. Or you can catch the Coyotes for plus 100,000 at the back of the pack if you want. Chicago's also plus 100,000, so the race is on. But um, if you want to lock in any team futures for the season, since we're still before the season, you can do team total points. You can bet on teams to make the playoffs. You can bet on teams to have 100-plus points in the regular season, which if you looked at the Eastern Conference last year, that happened to many teams. So chances to get some good money there. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now if you haven't already. And college football, it's right here pretty much. And the NFL is around the corner. So got an offer for you at the DraftKings Sportsbook app right now. If you download using the promo code PHNX, bet just $5 on college football and get $200 in free bets instantly. That's code PHNX only at DraftKings Sportsbook. And Sean, I think, is, are you going to come in or are you going to? Okay, I'm going to read Sean's pick of the week, which he just commented. This is Sean's DraftKings Sportsbook Pick of the Week. Seattle Mariner outfielder Julio Rodriguez is on the verge of signing a 12-year, $400 million contract, a little bit different money than the Phil Kessel signing, taking him as an anytime home run hitter at plus 350 as my DraftKings Pick of the Week. So if you want to trail Sean, because he's been, and he's 21. Wow. Imagine having $400 million at 21. Yeah. <laughs> Unreal. Unreal. Um, but that's Sean's pick of the week. So 
if you want to get in on those odds, do so at DraftKings. And I mentioned at the top of the show, but I'm sitting here in the new office and I'm sitting in my very, very comfortable chair that is from More Furniture. Um, and I'm looking through the window of my office at all of the amazing recliner seats in our office that is also on behalf of More Furniture. So shout out to More Furniture. They hooked up our entire office with brand new studio furniture, office furniture. And if you're interested in checking out More's Labor Day sale, you can visit morefurniture.com. So thank you to More Furniture for my very comfortable chair right now. I'm very happy to be in the office rather than at my house. Shout out to my roommate for having to put up with me doing live shows at our kitchen table and her having to tiptoe around and not make sounds while she's getting ready for work. So thank you. Thank you. Leah, I know that the uh, 41 degree Pellegrino is already in the refrigerator for me. Um, I'm just wondering if my lumbar pillow will be there by the time I arrive back in the office. Do you know where the office is? Do you need to give you directions after all the moving is getting done? The building is done. Everything's clean. The garbage is taken out. Oh, forgive Greg directions by then. Maybe Craig can Craig, wait now. You, you got to bring us lunch on the first day or something. You think? <laughs> Buddy, I got the, I got the bad signal yesterday. Hey, come help with the floor. I will say this, when you get those kind of projects, and this is nothing against some of our home ownership helps prepare you for those kind of moments and being dad worthy, like a daddy that helps like being like the dad <laughs> vibe, the dad vibe, you call the dad in like, you, I, you know, it. yeah. So, I mean, how many floors has Sean DePaz put together in? No, of course not. Like I just changed toilets today. I guess in DP hasn't done that either because over time and you own a home, you have to do shit like that. And so you got to put a floor in call PD and okay. how quick did it go in? If you, and I tell you what, Saul and I nailed that thing out. Like it was minutes and boom, done. Okay. <laughs> Well, thank you for that. Thank you for your Sean, appearance. stop using it. the PHNX Sports account for your own <laughs> comments. Enough. Yeah, whatever. It's not like anybody oh, heard it or it's going to live forever oh, on the internet. God. Well, you mentioned oh. I should bring in lunch. I feel like I sh today feels like the hot dog episode, doesn't it? It I mean, should. We're talking about I... Phil Kessel. We're talking about Christian Fisher. There's been all kinds of hot dog news lately. I feel like I should bring hot dogs in when I come in. <laughs> hot dogs are having their moment in the spotlight right now. I but will you know say. what I won't bring in, Leah? I will not bring in Ted's hot dogs because... I know that you guys wow. deserve superior hot dogs, so I'll find a Vienna beef place DP. close to the office, and here. I'll bring in some Vienna dogs for everybody. I That's love this there. rivalry, the, the Chicago Sean, Craig versus Oscar, Buffalo. You want Sean. me to bring in Oscar Meyer for you, Sean, since you're not discerning with your hot dog taste? <laughs> and he can't defend himself right now, too, because the echo in the studio. So he can't. <laughs> oh, That's my God. Yeah, All right. Like, well, by the way, the, lastly, the headset. Comment. That headset setup Leah's got and the mic, that's money. Like that's really good. It's a good mic. Like is I that feel are very, they all over I the new studio? Very we these are the mics we use every time we go to four peaks. Oh, and, and those are our oh cool, cool. Yeah. Those are our out of the show mics. It sounds great anyway. <laughs> All right, we, we got, I gotta veer this <laughs> veer us back go. on we the gotta... tracks. Um <laughs> yeah, so we, so we caught up with Christian Fisher the other day. It was a phenomenal catch up, um kind of it does sound you like did that. not just say that. <laughs> I didn't, you didn't, say I didn't that. do it on purpose. I swear. It's bullshit. Um, he's just he's just um, a, a fun guy. Got to hear about his off season. You'll hear what he's been up to on the side. Um, uh, maybe a retirement plan for Christian Fisher. Oh my god, um, that was that was a crazy nugget that he dropped on us. Yeah, yeah. So really, really great interview from Christian Fisher. Thanks again to him so much for joining us and without further ado i think we should send it over to our catch up with christian fisher what do you guys say let's do it all right here is christian fisher joe christian fisher on a, a is it a friday fun day or is it a fisher friday i'm not even sure wow we should call that well that works out well <laughs> that's good branding for you either way but fish thanks for joining us and since we're talking to you the for, for the first time since uh you know we, we all got back in town Let's recap your summer. Hockey players often have more interesting summers than media members. Let's be honest about that. So what'd you do this summer? Oh, um, obviously start of summer is always, I think everybody, it's unanimous, takes a month off or so. So that was a big travel. Uh, went to, God, where'd I go? I went to Cabo. That's usually the go-to. I usually go down to Cabo uh, nice. for at least two weeks or a week and a half uh, at the end of the season. Uh, that's, uh, that's my happy place. That's where I sit 
with my bruised body and drink tequila. Um, <laughs> did that. Uh, obviously got back to Chicago. Always, uh, you know, go back there, see my friends and uh, extended family. Um, went to, goodness, went to Napa for my first time. Got to do Napa. Got to do a little, uh, a little wine trip out there. Loved it. Um, my God, though, is it, is it expensive? Are and, you a wine guy, Fish? Not a snob, really? but I do. I mean, I'm not a snob, but I, I love it. A nice glass of red boy. I'll tell you that. I've seen uh, all these coaches. Like I had, we had Dave Tippett. We had Alf Samuelson and these guys who clearly didn't grow up drinking wine. Sorry if they're listening. Yeah. Cause I know tips an avid listener, but they, they didn't grow up drinking wine. And neither did you. And all of a sudden you become, now you're wine guys. Like it's okay to enjoy a glass of red. Yeah. I get it. But don't be the guy that, oh, that has this bouquet. I'm not buying oh, it. Oh, no, no. See, that's PD. Okay, I'm fish. insulted that you even brew, that even. I know. That's why I said it, Fish. <laughs> yeah, that is my first. If that's my seventh trip to Napa, then yeah. Then we're having the conversation. <laughs> yeah, but to go see the beautiful wineries and have a good yeah. glass of red. I'm totally yeah, exactly. all in. So um, that was a good one. And then uh, basically training, my summer training was the same as you've heard a hundred times. I split. I come in here for about three weeks, do some skating stuff with Lars and um, and then head back to Chicago. It's it's just much much easier out here with uh, with Cal's Schmaltzy bunch of guys are out here. So we kind of coordinate it. We come in, do our workouts for three or four weeks, skate, and then uh, take off. So um, did that. The biggest uh, biggest, which was probably three or four days ago of uh, my summer. My sister got married um, wow. last weekend in Wisconsin, and uh, you're looking at. Reverend Christian, an ordained minister. I did the wedding. Did you really? <laughs> Seriously? Oh yeah. I'll uh, I'll put out some pictures here shortly. I, I don't think I'm allowed to yet because what my sister is uh, needs to be the first one to post them all. As uh, wow, talk but, about uh, a life experience. That's awesome. Yeah, which is it's quite a story because uh, uh, you know about 18, 19 years old uh, might have had a few beers with my buddies and uh, in Canada because that's. Late, yeah. state, late state rules um uh of course infomercial pops up saying you know they're 39.99 you could or you know marry your friends this and this and that I go, no way call in give them my credit card every january 1st since i've been 18 years old i get a shipment of 10 license certificates and a certificate with my name on it this that i'm an ordained minister I was okay. thinking Craig, Craig and Tara are thinking about renewing their vows. I, yeah, we, I, we, I can see it's a pinnacle. Piece you know, Lee Merrill still still on the market. Lee so is still you know, on the market. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> my God. Fish, keep those. Keep a couple handy. Keep a couple of those licenses up, Fish. You never know. Everyone, everyone tells you Plan B, and you know, and I don't know if I found it, but um, that was uh, that was probably the coolest. That was probably one of the coolest things I've done. And it wasn't, uh, which is, I'm really close to my sister, so. Uh, really nice. She uh, she FaceTime here called me with her her husband now or when they got engaged and um, uh, asked me to do it. It wasn't uh, it wasn't like that. So we're really close. And she uh, she asked if uh, if I would do it for her and that she would love for me to be up there. And um, that's awesome. That was uh, that was an experience. That was that was more that was the most nervous. I that that was more nervous than probably my first NHL hockey game. That's did you have uh, a script or something? Do you I mean did they tell yeah. you what to read or do you come up with your own words? I, and I came up with my own words. Um, it wasn't, uh, both families were non-denominational Christian, so it's not crazy Catholic and followed all the, the rules. And I'm, I'm not singing. I went to a wedding actually three weeks before with my family and the, the priest was singing to the, to the crowd. And everybody, <laughs> let me tell you, there was a lot of people looking at me asking if I was going to do that. I want to sing. Um, but, uh, that was good. Yeah. I wrote out the whole script and, um, just, kind of kind of free winged it which is nice and uh my mom was probably more nervous than me because she was oh boy she was nervous about the whole thing and uh she tried to breathalyze me before i went up on the altar and <laughs> just to make sure yeah just, just to, to make sure, sure. Yeah, you know this is probably really... a pretty smart idea yeah yeah no she was uh she was she was watching i had to have a couple beers just to calm down but um but all that's up. unreal though it but, but cool. it just shows you're a professional athlete but you're just like everybody else like that's a real family moment that's really cool that's unreal like that's just like you, everybody else he's an ordained minister now no, but i mean that's a good calling him father fisher but he's not sitting in the gym working on his bench press he's out, like that's really cool i want to see that on twitter like he's living yeah. a life unbelievable do it all baby 
that's awesome. So fish, when you talk about your training and you, you talk about the differences between here and, and back home, Chicago area, like, are there a lot of people back in the Midwest that you skate with, that you work out with? Because that seems to me that'd be an area where NHL players gravitate to in the summertime. Do you get to train with other guys? Yeah, there's uh oddly enough, I think we, we kind of, you, you see the same guys that, uh, kind of grew up with when we talk about like uh, we joke around with Schmaltz and Dvorak and Henestros that all of us playing for the mission, right? We, that's kind of the crew that we're, we're with again in the summer. So um, Ryan Hartman, I mean, there's a, there's so many guys and a few of the kind of like here, right? You see all the coyotes, especially the young guys, they stay out here. A lot of the Hawks guys, especially yeah. young guys, like a Stromer was there last summer, right? Um, you're, you're spot on. There's just a, a randomly, some guys that live there, some guys that played there, some guys that have summer houses there or whatever it is, um, are all down there. So that's that's a it's a good spot. Um, I think uh, kind of the the problem, not the problem, but uh, if you're not in the city, right? If you're in the suburbs, I have a house in the suburbs, so 45 minutes in, sometimes the workouts or the skates at a different Johnny's Ice House, and you're 40 minutes this way, so kind of logistics of that is uh is not ideal that's kind of why i kind of gravitate towards coming out to arizona it's all in one spot and easy and and whatnot so um but there is uh i would probably say over 20 20 to 30 nhl guys down down there in in, in chicago so easy picking to come from fish uh when the list of rfas who had received their quali qualifying offers was released in july um your name was on, not on it a lot of people freaked out for a few minutes anyway, including me while I was getting drunk in a brewery in Portland, Maine. Yep. Um, but the fear was short lived because you signed the one year contract with, with the Coyotes on July 11th, I believe was your qualifying offer. First off, take us into the thinking, signing that one year deal, which gives you one additional season as an RFA before you become a UFA. What's the thinking behind all that? Um, I'd say uh, probably the biggest thing, um, or why, uh, the last, obviously the injury, right? Not playing those last 30 games uh, was tough. Um, and unfortunately too, it was, I started, because of the whole center to wing thing, right? We're out of centers last year, I started playing center. Yep. It takes a little bit. PD could attest, it's it's a whole different game. I mean, it's, you're changing things, face-offs. I mean, what the heck are those? I haven't taken one of those and, you know. Um, so, Oddly enough, I started playing really well. That was probably the last, you know, game from 40 to 50. That was probably the best I was playing, playing really well, getting a lot of time. Um, and then obviously with the unfortunate injury. So um, I'd say that played a big factor into that. Um, just not having as many reps and touches and points that I'd like. Um, I think there's a lot of opportunity with this team. Um, speaking to Bear, I think we have a really good relationship. I think he trusts, trusts in my game. I think he could um rely on me in a lot of different scenarios so i know that I, the opportunity is there for for me to take and um i just think i have i, I have so much you know to give on a, on a season I, I still think uh you know my potential is, is way 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 higher than than where it uh, has shown in the last year or two uh with point production specifically um i know i i know it's uh it hasn't been the, the easiest of years for me and um you know, always tough when, when points aren't going in, but I think, uh, you know, for, for the summer to go on, I had that injury. It did a lot of rehab, right? It honestly was probably within a week of that last, uh, last game. So it was really close and then got to have a full summer of, of, of strength training and, and kind of, you know, really, really hammering hard this summer. Um, this is a big year for, for me and my career. And, um, I think just in my head, if, if I had it my way and, and what I'm going to do is just, have have the best year that I can and and I, I really do think that it's uh you know I'm I'm it's there's no more getting adjusted to it I'm, I'm very comfortable in this league I could play in this league it's just I know I have that next that extra you know 10 goals that extra 20 points I, it's, it's there I know I can do it I've done it before it's just um a matter of, of doing it for for 82 games you just gotta you got to do it every game and um that's that's kind of my thought process but behind that um kind of do it a, a big big prove it year one year one year thing and um and then hopefully uh could, could line out something uh longer after you talk about your the the injury and you look at the this team at the end of the year clayton keller goes down lesson cross goes down like the, 
decimated with injuries the last right towards the end of the season. So it sounds like it, but you, you're hundred percent healthy. You're ready to play. There shouldn't be anything holding you back starting day one of training camp. You're ready to go. Yep. hundred percent. Okay. So yeah. you have the summer. You talk about the offensive upside and we know you were kind of snake bit. You get close to it. You're around it. You get chances. It's kind of like Carlser a couple of years ago, hitting the post all the time. What did you work on over the summer to help you prepare yourself for this year's training camp? Um, I th- obviously my skating is a big thing and, uh, you know, everyone says they, you know, you work on it, work on, it. um, big thing for me was I, I lost about 10 pounds through the injury, not working out that stuff. Um, got to cut down body fat, body fat, body weight. Um, that was a big thing for me. So coming in, put on a couple pounds of muscle, lean mass, um, skating feels real, real jumpy, real fast. So I've been doing a lot of stuff with Lars out here in Arizona, um, as usual, but, um, offensively, I think the biggest thing is what I've noticed in watching film and talking to, to our skills and, and video coaches and whatever it is, um, my shot, I, I have a really good shot and I need to shoot more. Um, what that is though, is you walk, you, luckily enough, I get to skate with Austin Matthews, probably the best to, you know, do it. He, it's just so quick and you can't, if you give that one extra stick, you, you're screwed. You, it hits their stick or, you know, it goes, it's not good. Um, getting the shot off as quick as I can or, or more shots. Uh, I haven't shot the buck nearly as enough as I should um, for whatever reason, maybe over, you know, making an extra pass or, or not getting off quick enough, not thinking quick enough, whatever it is. So um, I think from my, from what I've seen in my own game and film, it's, it's the shot. I think if I could get that off, I, I know I could, you know, score a lot more goals um, in that way. So that's, that's been a big thing for me, just being able to, to get that off quickly, quickly, um, you watch Austin's goals. It's not like he has the hardest shot. It's it's on and off his stick before, even if the, and the goalie, it's not there, right? The, the shortest little pass could beat the goalie and one time it in. So um, did a lot of, a lot of video and a lot of looking at stuff like that. How to, how do those guys score those goals and, and hopefully translate that over to my game. So all of that being said, we've talked a lot about you've adjusted to that center role. You've worked on all these things in the off season. So what would you say your role is going to be on this team going forward into next season? Or what do you what do you see as your role? Or have you talked to Coach Turnier about what he sees as your role for this year? Yeah, I mean, I, I think you you look at our roster, right? There's um, it's pretty pretty, you know, a lot of there is actually some movement around. Uh, with opportunity, like I said, this, this year. And I think what they preach on this is, uh, especially with our team and kind of the whole, you know, rebuild and all this stuff that's going on. There's, there's opportunity, right? Bear plays, whoever's playing the best. Um, I think you, you look at other teams, right? The Kucherov is going to play first power play for the whole year. And that's that, right? Uh, that's as simple as that. I think the, the advantage of players being on where we are and on this team and, and having this opportunity, it, it's there for the taking. So, um, You'd like to think that you have a set role. I think maybe only Clayton Keller could could say that he's he's the guy. But um, I think anywhere top, I mean top nine player, whether it's right wing, I think it's nice having that center role, right? I think that obviously comes along with having to work on the the draws, right? If I could come down and be relied on on, on draws, you know, that obviously helps with with PK stuff too. I could go out as the, the second centerman, right, and, and always have, or we could send out me and me and Crosser, right, if you know, he could trust that I could take the draw, right? That's a, that's a big thing that, that helps a lot of minutes. So um, I think, I mean, I'm very versatile. We always talk about that. So, I mean, I played, I could play that. I played last year fourth, fourth, third line center. I could play second line, right wing. I could play power play PK. It's, it's all there. So um, really, I think the, the biggest thing is just having the consistency, right? You have to have, like I just said, whoever's playing well is going to get the minutes and going to play, with those top end guys. And um, I think it's just up to, up, up to me and a lot up to everyone to, to kind of take that opportunity. Well, you talk about those, we looked at the roster and we've talked a lot of the new guys. We had Nick Bugstead on the other, <clears throat> Nick Bugstead, sorry, mm-hmm. stumbled, stumbled through that one a little bit. Um, Zach Cassian, we've talked about some of the new players coming on board. Are guys slowly trickling in here from some of the new players? Stetcher, have you met these guys? You know, have you talked to them on the phone? We talked about that middle core and you're part of that middle core leadership group. Have you reached out to these guys to help cohesively build this group before they get here? Yeah, I, uh, Obviously, that's a, you know, when it comes to the team, I obviously, you know, love these guys and, and play a big factor of 
of trying to keep this team together and being a leader and, and kind of having a voice, uh, you know, a voice of reasoning with everybody. So um, definitely I reached out, I think just texted everybody uh, actually probably a month or so ago when, when all those moves were made and reached out and just said hi and welcome. And if you have any questions, simple, very simple stuff like that. Um, every guy I think that, that is, uh, I've talked to has, has heard about, and Petey could attest to this, it's for whatever reason, I think, and I, I think it's a claim to, to the locker room that we have and that kind of those core guys is we, we have a really, really, really well-respected and, and, unanimously known a fun locker room, a good locker room, a good environment. Um, you hear through the whispers, there's teams that don't have that. And, and that plays, you know, when guys are picking teams and you hear about, Oh, you know, that's a little, that locker room's clicky or that locker room's this and, or the vets, you know, if you're a young guy, you don't have no say. I, I think you, we do a really good job of, if you're, you know, we're one big team, but there's no head guy that's running the whole thing. It's, we're a big, big old thing. I think that's a, a testament to bear as well. Um, kind of how he runs it's it's one big old brotherhood and um that was a that was a really big emphasis especially as his first year so um but back to those those new guys I think every guy that uh that got traded to us or we signed is is really excited to be here um guys are starting to slowly trickle in uh Stetcher to it was here today at the skate today so um and it's so much funner once probably the once the start of September you'll you'll mostly have everybody here and um, those first three weeks are so fun, honestly, like those, just being able to skate, be in the locker room again and, um, chirp, you know, chirp guys and, and just banter locker room, all that fun stuff. And then on the weekends too, we, uh, um, try to obviously, you know, have some cookouts or barbecues, watch football here on, you know, coming up here, foot college football is coming up. So, um, always that stuff. That's, you know, that's how you get to know new teammates. I'm sure they're always you join a new team, it's always scary, right? Especially guys that have been, you know, Cass has been in, you know, Edmonton for whatever, how, however long, you know, you come to a whole new locker room, not knowing anybody, it's, it's intimidating. So that's the last thing we want from, uh, from guys that have been, been here for a long time is to just to welcome everybody and make them feel comfortable. And um, I think we do a really good job of that. So hopefully uh, guys will be in here in the next uh, week or so. And, We'll just have uh, keep kind of building and then training camp hits. Do you feel that transition, Fish? Like, do you feel like because you were part of that? You talk about that core, and I remember Rick Tockett making a big deal about that middle core. And you were you came in here. You were a young guy. You were a new guy. You were a rookie. You were a guy watching around, and now you're kind of you're evolving into. Gosh, you're one of the guys that's been here for the longest. You're a guy that's been around the organization. You're a coyote. Like you, you belong yeah. here. And we talked to Lawson Krause a week ago. I think Lawson, even though being drafted by someone else, has started to wear that same badge of yeah, I'm I'm, I'm maturing into the game. Do you see? you guys sharing that leadership group. And I mean that across that whole middle court, you know, Clayton Keller chick, there's that group of guys that came in through this together. Do you feel you've matured with this group? A hundred percent. I think that's been the funnest part. Honestly, I, I, I think I've touched on it here and there with, with other, uh, with other talks, but um, going through that with being able to do that with, with the same guys. I mean, those, all the, all the guys that you just mentioned are, you know, going to be lifelong some of my best friends that that'll be you know in my wedding so um those guys are you know to be able to go through the trenches with them and you know come out on the other side that's whatever you do if you do that in business and sports and whatever it is that's a that's a fun feeling to to go through that and you know it's it's not fun too so you need that you need to rely on the other guys right we've all had i've had bad years you've had bad games you've had bad this or that you you go through it you pick each other up you work harder you do all that fun stuff um, there's definitely been a transition. I think we all recognize that we, when we're, uh, sitting around just chatting about random stuff, that's always funny to think that, you know, we're, you know, Clayton Keller, we're all going into like our seventh year here as coyotes. That's wow, bonkers, right? Beyond, beyond your imagination. It's weird saying that. Cause like, you're exactly right. I remember year two or three and being scared to walk in cause Richie's going to yell at me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, it's fun though. You, you learn so much and, and you honestly, you don't do that without those, those guys before you, you don't, you, and then, and I think that's been the biggest thing is we had, we've had some really good teams of some really good character guys and leaders to, to learn off. of. Yeah. And let's, let's just stay with that for another second. Cause you mentioned Richie, obviously Shane Doan's still around. There've been some, some guys that you've really been able to lean on, but whether it's those guys from the past or even that group that they brought in last year, that was a bunch of good guys, but most of them are gone now. Um, do you feel like an increased sense of responsibility now? Cause it's, 
it's really on your shoulders now. Those those guys aren't around anymore. It is you. Yeah. I I think, I mean, as I think it could vary from from person to person, but I'd I'd say most of us. I think it's you want that. You want that. You know, responsibility. Um, you know, like you said, those guys. When I like, you, you kind of have the feeling, right? You know what the feeling is coming into your first year, second year. You know when you know Gunner shows up to training camp. You know that feeling of, oh, you know, I got to make that pass. You know, it's a vet. You got to pass. Now you know, right? You tell that guy, hey, Gunner. You're, we drafted you because you could shoot the puck to the top right corner better than anybody. Shoot it. Don't pass that. Even if it's Kells on the back door, don't feel bad. You missed the net. You missed the net. That's hockey. Stuff like that um, that kind of is it plays a lot of factors into it because that could, you know, affect kind of how you play. Oh, man. Um, you get I, it. I like it. I like having the uh, the responsibility. I think, um, you know, kind of getting to, to, you know, steer the bus and, and kind of move forward and, and, and go through it. You know, it's it's fun. I think you relate the the best scenario. I think and what you why we all work hard and why we we stick this out. We gone. You know, this is from year one, right? We've had that year with the bubble where we you know we had a really good team. We go for it. I came in in 2016. It wasn't. We were terrible. You know, not good. Bad record. Um, and then we're back. You know, we're in a rebuild. We go through this. There's you go through so much stuff. If you're part of this team, in which what you just said, you know, being here bleeding. Coyote for seven years and, and working and doing every summer, you want to work to the goal of making the playoffs every year and having a chance to win. Right. And um, we believe in, in the plan. We believe in, in the team's plan and the arena and bill and, and, and structuring this team. Um, but it really just, you, you do your part and you want to move towards that goal. I think the most satisfying thing would to be, um, you know, to, to come out on the other side of, of being a coyote and, and, you know, making this organization a, you know, a top end team to, you know, you want to come, you want to play. We have a fantastic way of life out in Arizona, but um, you know, it all comes down to making the playoffs and then having the chance to win every year. That's, that's the way that's where guys sign. That's where guys go. Um, we all know it doesn't matter about the weather or there's that we, we got to make, uh, make a change here and then start, you know, moving towards that goal of having a really good team and, and making playoffs. That's what it comes down to. So we have to ask because it's been the thing that everyone wants to know about. And we've been asking all the players who've come on our show over the last couple of weeks, the arena, um, obviously it's a unique situation for an NHL team, but we've gotten the chance to see it. So I'm wondering, have you gotten the chance to see it? What are your thoughts on it from a player perspective? And this week they announced the name that it would be called mullet arena, obviously named after donors, but simultaneously just a great name for a hockey arena. So I'd love your thoughts on playing at the ASU multi-purpose arena as a player and also your thoughts on mullet arena as the name. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, it's obviously the talk of, of the coyotes, right. Is, uh, this, this ASU arena, um, obviously, I mean, not ideal, obviously it's the NHL and you, you don't want to be playing in a small arena. We all, I, that's unanimously. I don't think anybody could argue with that. Um, it is what it is. We don't have control over it. Um, it's a, an arena situation. We don't we don't get to pick where we play, so it's out of your control. So really, you can't worry too much. Uh, it's the same dimensions as any other NHL rink, just very smaller capacity. Um, in my opinion, I think it's going to be one heck of a time out there to play in front of six thousand people. I mean, we've anybody that's played, we all played in those junior hockey arenas and. When they're bumping and they're flying, and we've been or college hockey games, they're the funnest thing in the world, right? And there's six, seven thousand new seat arenas. You have a time. Um, that's it's it's going to be. I think for the fan experience is going to be the best. You'll never get to do this again in the NHL. You'll never, whatever however long we're there, three years or four years, you'll never get to be able to watch an NHL hockey game in a six thousand seat arena and watch Ovechkin rip one timers. You know that's never going to happen. Um, Ever. So that's, uh, I don't think, I mean, everyone talks about it. It's such a big deal. I listen by, I think by game 10 there, no one, it's the normal, it's a norm, another game. Obviously the teams that are coming in for the first time, it's going to be a little different, but, um, and hopefully we just use it to our advantage, right? Hopefully we, we have some, you know, it's small. We're going to have hopefully a little coyote section out there going bananas and PD will be in. Oh yeah, I'll be there. They're uh, putting ketchup on the hot dog. <laughs> ketchup on dogs. With my mullet. Um, there it is. Yeah. Speaking of that, uh, Fish, have you had a mullet? Have you had a mullet? Did you I have, have a mullet? I've, I've not had a mullet. mullet. What year were you born? 97. Yeah, so I'm you missed the whole fish. damn thing. I you missed, missed the mullet thing. thing. I can, did. Can, 
Yeah. We'll send you the photos of Petey with a mullet. I have not had a mullet. We either. have it right here. Yeah. Oh, oh there it that's is. a solid nice mullet fish. fish. Okay. Like, look at that mullet. What? That is money. <laughs> oh, my God. That's the 80s, buddy. Welcome to the 80s and mullet Ooh. arena. Fish, ah. before... Before you, we let you go, and you took all this, appreciate you taking this time. Um, yes. yeah, I know how busy you are training and skating and stuff. Unfortunately, this is for a Friday show. And this, we have Friday fun day. That's a good thing. Yeah, it's fun. Well, for him, because he's on the spot. We're going to put him on the Friday fun day spot. Okay. okay. So every Friday fun day over the summer, the three of us have come to to help people figure out what to watch for the weekend and we recommend our weekend binge it's something we do every single friday here we recommend either a show or a movie that we are watching or going to watch and we try to sell that show like why are we watching the show so fish on our friday fun day what is your weekend binge is there anything you can recommend for people to stream this weekend okay so i have three thoughts that come to mind one I just finished two weeks ago re binging Game of Thrones. Oh, Psycho. Nice. Psycho Damn move. Dragons. Psycho move. Obviously, that's not a weekend thing. That's a, no. that's a couple month commitment. You got to commit to that. Um, so I committed to that this summer. Uh, rewatched. I really I recommend it because you miss a lot of things and you think about a lot of things if you like that. I'm not going to tell you. If you don't like Game of Thrones, then whatever. Don't, I don't really care. <laughs> uh, two. Uh, this would be a good binge this weekend because you could watch three episodes. Would be Hard Knocks. Um, the Hard Knocks on oh, wow. the uh, Detroit Lions is on right now. Fantastic, awesome, awesome. Uh, it's on Hulu or HBO, one of the two. Um, but uh, that new that I forget. I wish I knew the name of the head coach, but is if you watch this, you would run through a, a wall. This guy yeah, is man. unbelievable, awesome coach intense is crazy as hell but um good show and then three which uh i think me and craig talked about um is a new show and i actually am going to start it this weekend um i've been told by my family members and girlfriend we are starting the beer um which is obviously which comes up a lot on our show <laughs> yeah. and, uh, i've heard great things awesome because it's in chicago and it has the sh the cooking so you're familiar with the the restaurants, uh, you know, the guy worked at Alenia and, and all these places out there. And, um, and who doesn't love a good beef uh, beef sandwich from, from Chicago? Right. So uh, I've heard crazy things. I've heard really good things. So uh, that's going to be my binge. So we could watch it all together. That's beautiful to hear that you're going to be watching The Bear. You're going to yeah, like, it. by the way, there is a shot of Gene and Jude's in The Bear. So you'll see it. And I, and I know you're a fan. I am. I'm a huge fan. Bring your own ketchup. BYOK. <laughs> <laughs> we knew it was the ketchup come topic up. may come up, up on the show i, I think i don't even know. like saying that publicly if somebody if gene and jude found out i would <laughs> i wouldn't i'm gonna be banned from the place <laughs> oh my goodness all right fish well listen thank you for carving out a half an hour of your day to do this we always appreciate always love having you on the show great chatting with you my man all righty thank you guys i appreciate it we won't, won't be the last Thank you again to Christian Fisher. Unbelievable interview. So entertaining, as always. And also, actually, I'll get to it when we get to Weekend Binge, but any okay. initial takeaways from Christian Fisher? He's an ordained minister. I mean, how do we not talk about that? How is that? That's, that was my craziest takeaway from the interview. I, I could not believe it when he dropped that on us. Can you imagine having Fish marry you? Imagine the, just how much fun it would be to have Christian Fisher marry you. <laughs> I know. I might, that, I'm, I might have to renew my vows just so I can experience yeah, that. Why not? Why not? I, you know, for me, it, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how Fisher responds to what was a less than promising offensive campaign. Like, it, what has he done over the summer? What has he done to prepare? He wants more responsibility. He wants a bigger role. Let's see how that turns out. I mean, there's one thing about a team that's rebuilding. There's always a spot. And Andre Tournier is a guy that plays guys that, that deserve it and earn it. And we saw with Travis Travis Boyd last season playing in different spots um, and having rose to a first-line center for the first time. It, does Christian Fisher get one of those opportunities? Does Christian Fisher improve um, some of those areas that he wanted to improve on over the summer? That's what I'm looking forward to seeing out of Christian Fisher. What, what can his ceiling be?
I'm glad you brought up Travis Boyd because it's a really good example. We know in this league, a lot of times it's about opportunity. There are a lot of guys who think that they can do more than they're being allowed to do because of their roles. Christian Fisher is one of those guys. He really believes in his game. He, as, as he told us, he, he thinks it's there. There's more scoring. There's more offense. But you got to get the opportunity. You obviously have to earn the opportunity in the NHL. So it'll it'll be a very interesting season for him. He's you know under team control for two more seasons. Obviously signed for this year, and then he'd be an RFA for another season. What comes beyond that, right? That's going to be you know a, again a lot of that will have to do with opportunity, but a lot of it is also in Christian Fisher's hands. Another point that I felt like he really drove home, or that at least this is the sense I got from what he had to say, but. Just the, the locker room environment for this team. And I have no idea. Like, I have no idea personally. But it just sounds like such a positive experience. And because of that veteran presence over the years with, he mentioned Brad Richardson, Richardson, Shane Doan. We had the veterans here last year. It just sounds like, you know, such a, a nice group. So if you're going to have a team that's struggling and going through this rebuild together, it's nice to know that everybody kind of gets along and that there's this mentality. And I feel like that's the right thing in place going forward for when the team does, you know, want to actually win some games and be a competitive playoff team. So that was another thing that stood out to me about that interview. And it's funny, we've talked a lot this week about all of the NHL players, not just Coyotes players, but NHL players skating in, in Scottsdale. And it's still 105 degrees out. So we keep asking, like, why is everyone coming here? And I finally decided it has to be because you can get Four Peaks beer anywhere in the Valley and you can visit the Four Peaks 8th Street Pub. So that has to be the reason why else would they come here in 105 degree heat. Um, we love Four Peaks, obviously, on this show. I don't know. I might go drink one after because we have a whole beer fridge in this office. So full of Four and Peaks. It's Friday. And it's Friday. And we'll be at Four Peaks 8th Street Pub this coming Wednesday, August 31st, for the last Wednesday of the month, will be P all of PHNX will be doing shows all day long, starting with us at 11 a.m. So stop by the Four Peaks 8th Street Pub on Wednesday, August 31st, for good fun, food, and beer. And speaking of last Wednesday, we'll be announcing our next winner of the Toast of the Month sweepstakes then. So enter to win the Toast of the Month sweepstakes. You can win a $50 Four Peaks gift card, a PHNX shirt of your choice, and a PHNX annual membership. Go to gophnx.com or click on the link in the show notes. You must be 21 or older and enjoy responsibly. You don't have to be 21 to come by Four Peaks, though. The chicken tenders, amazing. Great food at Four Peaks. So we hope to see you this Wednesday. And before we get into Weekend Binge, I just want to let everybody know to check out FOCO, the leader in sports merchandise and collectibles. FOCO's got you covered with the best Arizona merchandise. They've officially licensed gear for men, women, and kids and everything from bobbleheads to swimsuits to Crocs. Head on over to FOCO.com or click the link below in the description for all non-presale items. Use the promo code PHNX for 10% off. So Christian Fisher brought up Hard Knocks. Um, obviously, they're going to follow the Arizona Coyotes. Not Arizona Coyotes. Arizona Cardinals. That would be something, though. Um, the Arizona Cardinals in season. So I'm really looking forward to that. But Christian Fisher sold me on Hard Knocks. So I actually started watching the Detroit Lions hard knocks and he's so right about their head coach unreal so my weekend binge tailing on Christian Fisher's weekend binge go check out hard knocks on HBO um, if you have HBO great watch because I'm Keep. almost done with Love Island I'm on episode 60 oh, Jesus good <laughs> lord 60. Yeah, but well, check out hard knocks. I'm just gonna I'm gonna go with the movie and I'm gonna go with one of those that we talk about must watches. This is really old. You're going way back. It's a 1967 release. It's called Wait Until Dark. It stars Audrey Hepburn. It's very Alfred Hitchcock-esque, and the whole entire movie takes place in an apartment in New York City. And I tell you what, high end suspense, and I don't, you know, it's cookie cutter movie after cookie cutter movie now and superheroes and all this. This is in a room for an hour and 40 minutes, high suspense, good acting, good storytelling, highly recommend. It's on HBO Max, Wait Until Dark. And I'll tell you this, I originally saw this as a play back in the 70s and all took place on one stage because it was written as a play and it's absolutely wow. phenomenal. So wow. step out of your comfort zone and wait until dark. All right. Well, I'm uh, going to take up a little bit of time here and I'm not sure oh, if no. Sean DePaz is going to, uh, yeah, I'm not sure if he's going to work with me here because I sent him something so I could 
show up, Petey, but I've also been slandering Ted's hot dog, so I'm not sure if he's. Oh, there it is. Wow. First of all, I want the I want you all to keep these key dates on your calendar. Oh, the Handmaid's Tale. There you go. See, there's some key series coming up, and obviously, I watch some of these with my family. But these are some key series for me, with some of the dates coming up, some of them a little more tenuous. And as I noted, with Severance, Ben Stiller won't talk to me, so I don't know when the next season of Severance is, is coming out. But these are some of the series that I'm going to be watching. Obviously, The Rings of Power is coming out the soonest, but The Handmaid's Tale is debuting. But as far as my binge for this weekend, going to get back to House of Dragon for the second episode. Yes, cannot wait. Curious what they're going to do. And like Christian Fisher, I've actually been watching a lot of the old Game of Thrones. Not that it's necessary for this, but... You know, my whole family decided they wanted to do it again. It's a little weird watching the early seasons of Game of Thrones because, quite honestly, there's just some basically what I would have to call pornography in the early episodes. Uh, so that's a little awkward. Sometimes I'll leave the room to go get something. With your kids and your wife? Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's awkward. <laughs> yeah. No, it's thanks. definitely awkward with my teenage daughters. Yes, exactly. Anyway, um, Moving on from that, because I don't want to talk about that anymore. There are two series that I would like to recommend. I'm a huge Jeff Bridges fan, so I watched the first episode of The Old Man to get a sense of this series. I think it's going to be good. The first 10 minutes, I was like, is this a, is this a, a series about dementia and having to deal with it with a family? Well, you think that for the first 10 minutes... And then it goes off the rails. So I'm all in. Jeff Bridges has a ridiculous resume of great movies anyway. I'm going to be watching this. And then the other series that I'm going to recommend for people is called Dark Winds, which is about a, a, a double homicide investigation back in the 70s um, in, in the Southwest. Uh, also a really good series, in my opinion. So those are my two recommendations. And those are the two things that I'm going to be watching in addition to House of Dragon wow. this weekend. That's a very thorough report, Craig. I know. I love how he had to get his own graphic in to upstage you, PD. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, yeah, I'm did. just over here like Love Island again. <laughs> yep, Love Island. Can, can we just talk about the fact that I actually created a graphic? I'm so it, proud. It, it, it you just did that yourself? Bad. I mean, it was simple, but you know, it should be simple for someone like Yeah, me. for those on audio, it was a black background with it was, white It letters. was dark gray. Buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> It was yeah. unreal. All right. it was but, unreal. It up but you did week. it. It was great. It was great. Man. And a lot of good recommendations. Yes. And you so... can come over and help me with home improving, Craig, if you if you're free. <laughs> oh, I'm no. sorry, I'm not clear by Mayo yet. So he's not he's not <sighs> medically that. cleared. Jesus. Um some great recommendations in the chat as well. Thank you for chiming in every time someone in the chat chimes in. I swear I after the show I write I add it to my list. I have a ton of stuff I want to watch. I have a flight next week so I can download some stuff for the plane ride. Um thanks mm -hmm. everyone for recommendations. Going, yeah, you won't be on that Wednesday show, will you? you no, Thursday, I'm going to I'm Friday. going to New York City. And, and I'm going to see Harry Styles live at Madison Square Garden. Wow. <laughs> that, to be, that was not the purpose of this trip. I, we bought those tickets literally last week. But um, Do so. you expect to see some content there, Leah? Like, I don't know. Yeah, I'll tweet. Before you walk in, it wouldn't be bad to film a little clip before you go into MSG. Just saying. Leah, would you be willing to rush the stage? <laughs> no. That would be pretty that one, If anybody that has any connections with Harry Styles crew or whatever get me backstage yeah. <laughs> yeah. just throw it out there you never know who's watching they're on they're listening oh, for sure they're listening to the show yeah like, harry styles is a huge we have the same demographic fan. right yeah. come on <laughs> oh man it sounds like well fun. it's you're leaving the, the we're leaving us in charge craig and i and and sean yeah. are in charge Ooh. oh yep. boy exactly so um well if you haven't checked out the phnx summer sale yet i recommend you do so stuff is selling quick head over to phnxlocker.com everything's up to 50 percent off check it out lots of great deals in the locker and another great deal is you get a free shirt from the locker when you sign up for an annual membership at gophnx.com so be sure to do that as well you can read craig's ode to phil kessel um i know craig <laughs> talked to travis boyd this week so something coming on that soon and we also talked to travis boyd this week and we will be airing that interview next week so stay tuned for that as well but become a member at gophnext.com join our members only discord also lots of talk hockey talk in there all day every day so we really appreciate everyone's support everyone chiming in in the chat if you haven't liked this youtube video while you're watching please do so and please like and subscribe and leave us a review wherever you get your podcasts as well. 
PD and Craig, any final thoughts before we head out? Yes well, or Craig, no? No, I'm just, I am mildly concerned because people know I have some anxiety issues. It is only Friday and I'm already worried about next Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Without You'll be me. fine. You you guys have a whole plan, which we will not reveal yet, but no, some really. exciting we, stuff have, coming up. Basically, yeah. that plan revolves around other people filling the content so that we don't have to, PD. It's, <laughs> like, it's exactly. Possible. Brilliant. But taking care of Thursday and Friday, I'm still working on Wednesday. So working on Wednesday. That's brilliant, Craig. Way to go. Yeah. And the good news about Wednesdays, we will be at Four Peaks. So yeah, can you can have, have a couple cocktail. drinks and well, you don't we, need anyone because yeah. you just... We can fill that. Sitting yeah. at a bar. Talking just saying hockey. go sloppy drunk. The show yes, should please. be sloppy drunk Wednesday. Yeah, why not? Fine with me. Right. Could be fun. In. Yeah, could be, <laughs> be a lot of fun. Um, everybody, thank you so much for watching and tuning in. Enjoy your weekend. Please follow us on Twitter at phnx underscore coyotes. Follow me at Leah Merrill, PD at S. Peters Hockey, Craig at Craig S. Morgan, and Sean at Sean underscore to pause. Enjoy the rest of your Friday. Enjoy your weekend. We'll be back live Monday on the PHNX Sports YouTube channel. Until then, we'll see you next time. Oh, 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 oh,